Hey guys, this is Matt and Amanda from Deep Woods Paranormal. Uh, welcome back to a paranormal podcast or video podcast if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, today we have a really special guest. Uh, the gentleman's name is Ken Burris. He runs the Ghost of Carmel, Maine uh, YouTube channel. He also has his own paranormal team uh, with the same name. And he lives in a house that is pretty much haunted. Seriously um, haunted. Yeah, seriously haunted. If you were going to put the label haunted on somewhere, Kent lives in this house. It's called the Lamb House. And uh, so we're going to introduce Kent here um, and have him come on and, and kind of tell us about what got him into the paranormal and uh, a little bit more about what he does. So, Kent. Welcome, Kent. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you for being yeah. on with us. Yeah, what got me into the paranormal? Um, these spirits did. They, uh, it's not something that I anticipated on. It's not. The paranormal investigations wasn't a hobby of mine. It wasn't something that I was even interested in. Not even when you were younger? You didn't have anything happen? Nothing? Well, yes. When we were younger, I mean, we definitely had stuff that happened. Stuff that would definitely be cater you know, definitely, you know, supernatural, but, you know, when you're a kid, you're so scared of the supernatural, you're scared of ghosts, you're scared of monsters under the bed, hey, there's something in the closet, you just tend to shut it out. So, as a kid growing up, yeah, <laughs> you know, as a kid growing up, it's just something that we never, you know, put our thoughts into. So, it was... Something that I never really put a whole lot of thought into, even in my teenage years, my adult years. As far as the supernatural, I knew it existed because based on my faith. But as far as ghosts running around and, you know, haunting people, no, I didn't believe that. You know, I just felt like, you know, people just had stories to tell. I mean, but I never... Never believed in humanoid ghost hauntings until I moved into this house. Then there is no doubt, yeah, there's definitely human ghost hauntings that happens. Yeah. I I was watching your some of your first videos from the house uh, on YouTube. And I want to know, what was the aha moment? Like, yeah, there's something going on. Something weird is happening. But what was that? There is something happening. Like, what was the aha moment for you? <laughs> yeah, um, before the aha moment, we lived in this house three years. But I worked a lot of hours. A lot of hours. But my son and my stepson, Gary, was telling me that there's stuff going on in this house. And other couple other residents from Carmel told them that they lived in this house and this house is haunted. There was no doubt stuff was going on. But that moment that prompted me to take a closer look at all this was three years after we moved into this house. And when I was in bed at night, there was the footsteps, walk, you know, walking up the steps, walking up to yeah. the door, walking towards my bed, and I heard the female voice say, help me. And I thought my wife was talking in her sleep. I was, you know, that was the only logical explanation. So I sat there looking at the back of her head. Well, when I felt the tapping on my hip, and then the female voice says, help me, Kent. She says my name. Oh, yeah, I sat up in bed real fast, and I was looking around the room, and I'm like, yeah, okay, you know what? This is definitely not normal. This is definitely something supernatural. Yeah, that was the moment. Right. Yep, wow. yep, that was the moment. So you, cur you currently still live in that house? Yep, I'm sitting in it right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Maybe something will happen when we're on our radio podcast. Yeah, you never... Yeah, not yeah. Yeah. But this maybe something yeah. like behind you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is our sanctuary. You don't want to have spirits here. Yeah. Every once in a while, we see things every once in a while, but 
Well, I have been on live podcasts, and people have heard EVPs, and they have seen stuff while on the live podcast, so you never know. I mean, you just never know yeah. when things will happen here. And there are times when just all hell breaks loose. All of a sudden, the activity is just off the charts. Well, I'm prepared for that. I want to know if your wife is interested in paranormal law. She is not. She okay. knows this activity is here. I mean, she's experienced multiple things herself, but as far as investigating it, she's not into that. No. Okay. I just wanted to know, because we, you know, husband I and wife. Dragged her into this <laughs> eight, what was it, 20 some odd years ago. Yeah, but. Hey, then, come with me to a haunted location. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was willing to do it only because I grew up with the paranormal. Like, yeah. it was always a thing in my house. My grandma mm -hmm. would talk about it. My mom would talk about it. It was just a normal occurrence. Right. All right, I just I just heard an EVP, so if you're recording, you may have captured that. Oh, we'll have to listen back for that, for yeah. sure. What did you think you heard? It was a male's voice. It, I'm not sure what he said because it was so fast, but I did hear something. At least through my headphones, I did. That's yeah, good. That's probably because you're wearing headphones. We're not wearing headphones. Yeah, we maybe should have worn a headphone. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, three years after you moved into the house, you had the aha moment and then you've been investigating ever since i wouldn't say investigating <laughs> you know because i had no idea what i was doing but i started taking snapshot pictures and taking my cell phone and recording and uh, hold on a second this is my cell phone well, no not that one well anyway yeah i mean i started recording it hoping that I would capture something because I needed to prove to myself something was going on that I'm not a nutcase right. you know I had to have something to prove to me that what I heard and what's going on in this house is real and it's not in our heads right. so yeah I, I started taking snapshots and started recording it, it wasn't investigating it was more um proving to myself that this isn't in our heads there's definitely okay. something going on here and once i started capturing that it just blew me away i mean once once you know these voices and evps and anomalies were captured on video i knew it wasn't in my head so then it was a matter of trying to figure out what this is because you know my beliefs were you know ghosts don't exist so if ghosts don't exist, then what is this? I mean, your first thought is it's all demonic. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something evil here. So I had to be convinced that what we were dealing with here wasn't necessarily all demonic. And yes, and yeah, and that was my next step is trying to figure out what this was. Once I concluded, no doubt, I mean, these are humanoid spirits, then it was the next step was figuring out, well, who are they? Why are they here? Mm -hmm. Right. And... Did the research is, is about the house? Well, when I asked the owner of the house the history about it, he'd said that, well, a caretaker was the original owner, and he did tell me that he built caskets, so I figured, well, okay, this is the house he lived in, you know, the garage. He must have built the caskets out in the garage. And But I was thinking caretaker, you know, he took care of the lawns at the cemetery and, you know, just made basically a maintenance person, basically, at the cemetery. That's what I envisioned when he said caretaker. Right. But later on I learned, no, he wasn't a caretaker. He was the undertaker. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. And I was in this house for, do, started these recordings and investigations for a year before I finally learned he, wa he was the undertaker in Carmel. Oh my goodness, so do you know if they ever brought any, like, bodies to the house? They never lived in this house. This was the funeral home. Oh. This was the funeral parlor. <laughs> 
So you, uh, so they did the full on autopsy, autopsies, and everything in your house. Well, no, autopsies are done at the coroner's office. You know, in a funeral, they don't ever do autopsies unless it's special circumstances. Now, in 1912, when Naomi Mitchell was murdered, she was brought to this house and an autopsy was done in this house. But as a rule of thumb, I mean, autopsies normally aren't done inside, you know, a funeral home. But back in those days, it was actually called a funeral parlor. Um, later on, that was changed to funeral homes. But, yeah, I mean... And we have concrete proof, without a shadow of a doubt, this was a funeral parlor. Um, you have a lot of spirits in your home. Well, you know, even then, a funeral parlor, you wouldn't think that that would cause this type of paranormal activity. The question is, why would that cause this type of activity? You know, and I'm not superstitious, mm -hmm. but based on what these spirits were saying, I felt like there was something a lot more going on here than just the fact that this was just a funeral parlor. More happened here to cause this type of activity. You just, I just don't believe a, a funeral parlor, all of a sudden there's portals open up just because it was a funeral parlor. Something had to happen to open up a portal. And this house has a couple portals, a dark one, that's in the basement that goes into a dark realm and then you have a portal that just leaves into a spirit realm where you know your where you, you know most of your humanoid spirits are but question is what caused that that's what took a lot of investigations to determine what caused these portals to open so you believe that the portal like the dark portal opens for negative to activity in the house yes okay yeah, I think that's really plausible. Like that. Yeah. Dog. Sorry, the dog is jumping on you. <laughs> yeah, and be, before I figured that out, I, I, you know, the spirits in the house and upstairs, especially upstairs in my bedroom, they were afraid of that basement. And Ghost Chronicles, chapter two, I'm getting ready to release on the YouTube channel, is going to go into details about that. But these spirits were afraid of the basement. And they kept saying basement over and over and over again. And, you know, I'm like, well, what's going on in the basement? Why are they afraid of the basement? And they keep mentioning evil and, and demons. And, you know, and eventually I learned that, oh, yeah, there's definitely a dark realm in that basement, an open doorway into a really evil realm that... Satellite. Why did you? Why well, I want to know what you. Well, I don't want to get too much in it because you said you're going to release the video, but what did you do to protect yourself from that portal? Well, from the negative energy. Well, somebody said I needed to get a medium in here and have the place staged and confront it. I personally felt like, nah, it's going to take a lot more than that because. I know what's going on and what I'm encountering, and I don't think that burning sage or, or having a medium in, to come in here to confront it's going to do anything. And I was right, because I did let one come in. And the entity in the basement kept putting out her sage sticks. She couldn't even keep them lit. And basically, she got chased out of the house. Wow. So the way I confront it is based on my belief in biblical teachings mm -hmm. you know you just flat out deal with it with the power of your words and you better believe in what you're saying you better right. believe that what you're saying to these entities that it's definitely something that you stand firm on mm -hmm. it's it's in my opinion that's just, that's just my opinion that encounter encountering this and dealing with it it's done through the power of your words. Once they realize where you stand and where your faith and where your thoughts are, they tend to back off. You know what? I said almost exactly the same thing um, in a previous podcast because my belief as well is that it doesn't matter what faith you are. As long as you have conviction with your faith, mm -hmm. it protects mm -hmm. you. Yeah. 
Yeah, you and I. Be, you don't even have to be faithful. You can just even just you know be a light worker. And then let's have a light worker where they you know use white. Yeah, but that's white, like white a to chase them out of here. Yeah. And then, I think that's like a part of. And then also, it's, I, I you know someone else told me one time, you know, there's two of things you can do. You can remind yourself of a bubble, which you know I've told people that millions of times. It seems to work because it's a mental thing. They think they're protected, so they're protected. And then also is the uh, other thing I was going to say, which is um, basically just mental, mental tough. You know, if you think they can't hurt you, you know, they shouldn't be able to harm you in any way. Yeah. I rely on faith mainly. All right, there's just another EVP. It was a growl. Right. So you might want to mark that on your recording. Yeah. Um, this is the way I confronted them at first. I just told them there's only one spirit I'm afraid of. You know, and that's the spirit that created me and the spirit that created you too and that's the same spirit that cast you out i said that's the spirit i fear you know and i you have to tell them look i know there's nothing you can do to me you're powerless which they are i think too many people give demons too much credit of how powerful they are now don't get me wrong if you are not grounded in some type of faith and stand firm on that they will overpower you and it's all in the mind you know, through oppression. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people that confront evil spirits that don't have any type of foundation in a strong belief system, they cannot end up getting attacked, no doubt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, but the, the thing is, it's just something not to mess with. I know what, I know they're down there right now, but... It's, I leave them alone. You know, you, you don't mess with me and I don't mess with you. I mean, you know, you stay out of my way. And it, it's just something that exists. And, you know, I, I, I went down there and I used, you know, the power of words trying to close that portal. But I don't think it'll ever really close. It's been there probably a really long time. Now. Yeah, it, you can contain it. But as far as closing it, and the problem is other people have come in the Lamb House wanting to do investigations, and there have some that went down in the basement and said things and did things that just basically reopened it again. Um, so at this point in time, the Lamb House is closed to visitors at the moment. Yeah. You know, because this activity, when they started wanting blood, and these entities started saying they wanted my blood, and I ended up getting uh, these punctures on my wrist with blood coming out, and they're saying they want my blood. You know what? It's that That's crossing a line, all right? Yeah. I, and, I keep hearing, um, like, a whispering sound. Yeah. I'm hearing whispering right now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, probably. They're probably talking about us. <laughs> As we talked about them, they're probably talking about us. Hey, well, let's just test this out real quick. Are you guys here? Did you hear that? The vacuum just went on in our house. <laughs> we have a, um, yeah. I know I just got the chill. Yeah, I just got the chill. Right, we, we have a, uh, the, Robot, the robot yeah. vacuum. Yeah. It's set for nine o'clock every morning. It's just turned itself on. Well, that's weird. <laughs> well, it's it's to... seriously is, is moving around right now and vacuuming. That's weird. I don't know why I did that. I'm gonna go look at it real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She and I have lived in multiple places with paranormal activity. It's right there. You can't see it, but it's right behind the. the Right. The chair, it's yeah. checking me right now. Okay, drone up the noise. Wow, that's never happened. <laughs> Tell you what. Off like that. Let's do something real quick. I can't promise you I'll capture anything, but let's do this. Okay. Well, this can't. She record that. Are you guys here? I'm going to record with my phone. 
Hello? Okay, I'm going to play it back. I may not be able to hear it, but you should be able to hear it on your end. Yes. Are you guys here? Oh, I heard that. Did you hear that? Yeah. I heard that too. Okay, so that was definitely me being captured. Let's play that one more time. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. Sound like a, girl, a child's voice. All right, and I have my headphones on, so there's no interference. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. When uh, we get done here, when we get done here, I'll enhance that and send it to you on your on the messenger, so you can hear what that was. But that sound like a child's voice. But yeah, I mean, they respond no matter what, and the activity here is just completely off the charts. It this yeah, is flowing over somehow into our house because we don't. Our house is new. Well, we don't have a lot of activity. Well, let me. Of, go ahead, I sorry. I have heard that people that's been to this house when they went home, all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. There's did you hear that? Yeah, I heard like a growler. There's there was some more EVPs. Hello? Oh, it's a feedback. That's my voice. Oh, I didn't hear feedback on my end, though. Not only is the vacuum still going, it's like going in circles. It's seriously not moved. Because when that vacuum goes off at 9 o'clock in the morning, it goes, it has its own pattern. So it will go to the left, around the fridge, and into the, the living room. It literally is doing circles over there. <laughs> it's just circling. It's uh, you know what? I, it doesn't surprise me. If, well, one of the ladies brought over her toy robot that walks and talks, and... You know, these spirits definitely can use electronics because it literally called her the F word. Wow. Her toy robot. I mean, that's not programmed to say the F word. No, it's not. No, it's not. No. I'm just... Uh, crazy. The whole thing is just crazy to me. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could, like, I video recorded it with my phone. And then somehow, hopefully, we can maybe we can like send out a video on YouTube or something. So yeah. Can it with just our app. Um, but I can't record it and record us at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I think something just moved behind you in the doorway. I thought I saw it moving. There's not just a sliver of the doorway I can see out of, but... <laughs> so, what's next for you, Kent? What, what is your... You said you are going to do um, the new videos coming out soon, but what is next for you and your house? Well, right now I stopped doing investigations in the house. And what I'm going to do for now is just go back over the last four years of recordings, and I just heard another EVP, go back over the last four years of recordings and investigate the investigations, if that makes any well, sense. Yeah, because you might hear things now that you didn't hear before because you weren't as open to it. And I right. Think the longer that you in investigate or, or just, you know, be in this field, when you go back and look at your old footage, oh, that's this, oh, that's this, because you weren't thinking of that or you weren't believing it at the time. Right. So that's my thoughts anyway. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know what to look for in the recordings. Mm -hmm. 
You know, but I did find out so far that when I'm going over these recordings, I mean, I missed a lot. There's a lot more going on than what I thought. You know, they were definitely trying to get my attention, and they definitely had some things they wanted to say. Well, you had, I watched your YouTube channel. I uh, haven't watched everything. I'm still playing catch up here. You know, there are things going on, but um, you, you had a celebrity ghost that you, you actually uh, were able to figure out who it was? Yeah. Woman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep, Myrna Fahey. Myrna Fahey. And that was kind of shocking when I found out that. She stayed across the street from the lamb house in the summer times. I was like, "Why? Well, you got to be kidding me!" You know, and that was probably, you know, back in those days, everybody knew each other, and more than likely, she came over here. She's been in this house visiting. Yeah, I watched the whole video. I thought it was really fascinating. I didn't. I never heard of her before. So she was from the forties, fifties. Yeah, she was uh, in the 50s and 60s, basically. Okay. Well, don't feel bad. Most people in Carmel never heard of her either. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, Murder Fahey. But that was, that was strange. I mean, you know, I knew that there was something going on with the apparition with the lady in white with the long, dark hair. And I knew it had something to do with children, but, you know, Myrna Fahey never had children in life. Right. You know, she died when she was 40, and I believe she just loved looking in on children. I mean, she wasn't there to scare anybody or cause harm. She just liked looking at children. And then Lacey was just one of the children that, yes, she loved looking at. Yeah, it sounds like she just came and visited. Well, her... Heart was definitely here in Carmel. That's where her heart was at. I mean, I mean, if you think about it, if you die and you're going to have to linger until whenever, I mean, where are you going to hang out? You're going to hang out where your most fondest memories are. Right. And, you know, I don't think the Hollywood lifestyle is as glamorous as people think it is. You know, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, there's so much drug usage and suicides and, you know, I mean, those, they aren't the most happiest people. It's kind of like once you get so much and once you have so much money and you reach all your goals, what do you do from there? Right. right. You, you don't have anywhere to go. Yeah. And then people are fake to you and they, you know, it's like, you're the most popular person, but you're the loneliest because they're not really liking you for you. They like right. you for and yeah. Yeah. I've watched all kinds of, I'm a huge documentary person. <laughs> I watch documentaries like crazy. I know. I love that kind of thing. <laughs> yes. I, I think when I follow them, I'm into it like what's happening with their life? How how did they get there? Yeah. Why are they I think that, you know what I mean? I think when um, dealing with humanoid spirits, when we have encounters with them, I think you have to use a lot of common sense. You know, I mean, you have to put yourself in their shoes and think, well, you know, why are they in this situation? Why are they asking for the help that they're asking for? Why are they here? I mean... And, and you got to dig and figure it out, but it takes a lot of common sense, too. I mean, like, what would you do if you were them? I mean, I'm sorry, but if I was murdered, somebody suddenly took my life and I was murdered and I never got to say goodbye to anybody, you know, and I'm sure that's a very lonely situation, even, you know, when you're a spirit. Right. You know, you were taken away from your loved ones just as much as, you know, your loved ones lost you as well and and of course you're not going to want to move on you're not, you're you have unfinished business because you never got to say goodbye you never you never got to finish writing the book of your life yeah. i mean so it's just common sense mm -hmm. right that maybe that's a lot of times you know they're trying to tell us something right 
Yeah, because I have is like I have instances where um, I'll get woken up in the middle of the night of someone talking to me and trying to tell me something, and and I try really hard to understand what they need from me, but I can't always. Oh, it's terrible. When we the last house we lived in had a lot of activity. There was two very strong spirits in the house. Yeah. Um, they were very dominant in the house. They kept bad things out. And I literally go to the door after an investigation, unlock the door, and try and open the door. It wouldn't open. But I know it was unlocked. And then I'd say, it would hit me. Oh, hey, stupid, clear yourself. You know, if there's anything with me, you can't come home, home with me. And yeah. the door physically, the handle would physically turn and open. And I'd be like, thanks, babe. Wait, where are you? <laughs> it's yeah. just sitting 50 feet away on the couch. It's like, okay. Yeah. We asleep at night. And I can hear her. And she would wake me up because she's sitting there talking. And then I looked over and this little girl, little blonde girl, you know, pigtails, the uh, blue bonnet shirt, the baby doll shoes, and the knee high socks. She comes walking around. She's like, "Oh, you're awake." I'm like, "Oh no!" <laughs> like, no, no, no. I'm sleeping. You you come back later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He said that I talk to people in my sleep. I don't always remember it. Like recently, we went to, um, I mean, my mom went to Miss Molly's hotel in like um, Fort Worth. And I kept waking up my mom saying, What? What? Because I thought she was <laughs> talking to me. But there was a ghost there trying to get my attention. And I can't, I don't have like, the gift where I understand what they're saying to me. I can hear them, but I don't understand them. Well, when it comes to hearing ghosts in the night in your sleep, <laughs> in the next upcoming video in Chapter 2 of Ghost Chronicles, uh, there's going to be a clip in there when I got woke up in the night, and there are multiple spirits in that room, in my bedroom. Wow. There is a death moan, this moaning. I, I don't know if you guys know what a death moan sounds like. It's when yeah. you you when a person dies, especially a, a cancer patient, you know, they will make this moan sound over and over again. And then it slips into what they call the death rattle is when they're, they're there's this gurgling sound coming from their lungs because they're they're dying i mean they're they're once the death rattle hits it's any moment that's why medical people call family and say we need to get here your loved one's going to pass you know you know the signs but there's a death moan that people will make when they're getting ready to go well that night there was a death moan and it was loud i mean it woke me up and if it wasn't for the fact that this stuff's been captured on recording, I probably would have been knocking on the state hospital's door begging for a bed. You know, seriously. Yeah. It's it's a good thing it's captured on recording because I know it's not me. Yeah. You know, when that's completely Lulu. Right. When are those videos coming out again? Well, I'm working on it now. It's okay. probably in another week. Could be longer, depending on what I do. Is I get all the footage together first, and then I do the narrations, and then I'll sit down and talk about it based on, you know, trying to fit the pieces of the puzzle together, explain to everybody what happened. This is the thing with what's interesting about my videos. I read somewhere that somebody said, well, Kent just scripts all this. And, and I'm like, well, yeah, I do. But it's only after the fact, after I hear what these spirits say. Then I put it together. But basically, it's these spirits who script this. I just follow what they're saying and put it together so people understand what's going on. Right. You know, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't write scripts on this. I mean, I have no idea what's going to go on in each investigation. Even outside of the lab house, when I go on an investigation, I try to tell people, don't tell me the history of the place. I don't want to know, you know, anything you've learned about it. I want to do the investigation first. 
I want to hear if we capture anything. And if we do capture something, I want to hear what these spirits say. And I want to see if they're telling us what's going on. When I take the recordings back home, that's what I call the initial investigation. I mean, the first step of the investigation. I'll go through the recordings, and if there's stuff captured, I'll go back and reiterate based on what these spirits said. Right. And to get, you know, then I might go back a third time to get confirmation. I'm going to make sure that what they're telling me is accurate. You know, so I go back a third time and maybe a fourth time, even outside of the lamb house when I do an investigation, I'll go to a location multiple times just to make sure that what I'm hearing, what I'm capturing is what they're trying to tell me. Right. Yeah. Well, you live in a really cool area. I mean, you have all the silk homes. I've seen you on a couple of YouTube videos going to the old, uh, old school, excuse me. Yeah. And, uh, that, <laughs> like, to rule I'm like, oh. Like the children singing? Is that the one you're talking about? The old school that we're all standing across the street and the you can hear the children singing? Yeah, I could kind of hear them. I wasn't I didn't have the volume up very loud, so I was like, he's hearing something, but he's just walking around in there. It just felt haunted. Oh, the old school building here in Karma. Okay, gotcha. I thought you were talking about the old um uh children's um orphanage in Bangor. I don't know if I've watched that video. I haven't I seen watch. that video. Yeah, that's called uh, Ghost yeah. Ghost of Bangor. I wanted to tell you that while you were speaking just a minute ago, I, I heard it in the back, uh, in that, in the corner of the, the in your door frame, something white, uh, see through white came out a little bit and then went back. Yep. So if you're watching the video of the podcast. Go back a minute from now and and yeah, look funny. behind Kent because yeah. I saw like a white entity of yeah. some kind come out and then go back. Yeah. yeah, that's not surprising. I mean, I see uh, what I call mist apparitions in here all the time. When I first saw this stuff, I thought there was something wrong with my eyes. I even talked to my doctor about it, but it dawned on me, I'm only seeing this stuff in this house and not other places. I'm like, you know, this is before I, you know, started investigating the house and believed in the paranormal, but I really seriously thought I was having, you know, there's something wrong with my eyes, that stuff moving in it, that I was seeing this stuff, even at... Yeah, even at nighttime, you know, these black dot things moving across the room, and, you know, some of them are big, some of them are just a dot, and I'm like, yeah, you know what, I've got some crazy floaters going on in my eyes. <laughs> but like I said, I mean, once it dawned on me what was going on in this house, I got to thinking about it, I'm like, you know what, I only see this stuff in this house. Yeah. You know, and, I, you know, I'd see, like, at the corner of my eye, somebody just walking, like, what the heck? And when I look really fast, you still kind of see it, but it just dissipates real fast. I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know, kind of. We have thought, a feeling they've like, been there, done that. Yeah. I think they just saw something. Yeah, the last house. Uh -huh. This is, this house is yeah. nice. It's, it's a brand new house. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything, though. We have this house built, but yeah. The only thing I've seen here is, is what looks like a, a, a little Indian woman. Um, I hope it's the woman. She's got really long braided hair. She's only about, I would say she's not even five feet tall. And I always see her from the back. Or I'm hoping it's a her. But whatever it is, I have really long hair down to about the, the middle of her butt, butt excuse me. And uh, I've only seen her twice. She just looks like a really old woman. Yeah. I don't see anything in this house. Thank but God. in the last house, like two houses ago, we had doors open, the dogs would bark at nothing, the piano would play itself, things would move, Jeez. everything you can think of that ha is happening in your house happened in that house. Yeah. Like, would turn on really loud. People would be there and then they would say, hey, who's that person down the hallway and there's no one there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we left home security cameras out monitor our dogs because they were doing stuff they were supposed to be doing and we caught footsteps we caught a shadow uh, 
Yeah. I was happy to get out of the house. So all of your, not all of your experiences, some of the experiences that you're having in my house, we have. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, well, we never thought we were crazy. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that's been nice about this house is learning about the paranormal. Mm -hmm. I mean, if anything, these spirits have trained me to be a paranormal investigator based on trial and error, trust me. And I just saw just now right there one of those spark orbs that you see in this house, and I captured them on camera. It'll just, like, shoot a spark. I don't know if you look back at it because I was looking at the... At the door. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen yeah. looking at the door, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's probably like Mr. Spark Orb. Yeah, we're um, everybody's going to have to like go back and look for the Spark Orb. But what's been amazing here is that some of these spirits actually help me by testing and understanding the paranormal, I mean, how it works. You know, with devices that I would use, I would have them, you know, help me test it out. You know, it's just, it's just amazing how they've helped. It, me understand how this works. That's what I thought was amazing. Do you feel like you're, a, you have been blessed with all the spirits in your house? Oh, uh, I, I, I don't know if I'd say blessed. I mean, um, I can say when I when I started r recognizing how powerful this activity was, is, you know, it's, I, I got on YouTube and started watching different paranormal investigators and got on TV and started watching some stuff just to try to learn about it. But I didn't see anything in, in a lot of these you know, shows or anything like that that can compare to what I was experiencing here. Yeah. You know, because I thought seeing apparitions and dealing with what I was dealing with, I thought that was normal. I thought everybody experienced that when they're dealing with encountering paranormal activity. And I thought paranormal investigators just captured apparitions all the time and, you know, mm -hmm. captured disembodied voices and strange anomalies. I thought that's what a haunting was all about. But I'm like, wow, I mean, I just kept watching and watching and watching. And I'm like, well, this house is definitely different. I mean, it's definitely got something going on here that's very unusual. Mm -hmm. Now, just to, you know, I don't consider myself blessed to be with it, you know, or or um, to be around this. It's just something that just happened. Right. You know, it's... Oops, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just something that was an accident. Yeah, understood. <laughs> well, maybe not. Maybe you were put there on purpose. But um, how many spirits do you think you have in the house? Usually when I ask, there's quite a few, but I would say that on a regular basis, probably anywhere between 8 to 10. Wow. But when this activity is off the charts, it's like a doorway opened up and, and it's literally flooded with activity. Multiple encounters. Yeah. And do you think that most of the spirits in your house are pretty intelligent? All of them are. Yeah, they seem to understand what you're doing. And stuff yeah, like that. they are intelligent. They know exactly what's going on. They intelligently answer questions. And, and I'll tell you what, somebody comes into this house doing an investigation and a spirit doesn't like them, they'll let them know. I mean, they have no shame. They will tell them. Call them the F word, tell them to get out, call them names. Mm -hmm. You know, it's basically a verbal attack. Wow. And I think they know somebody's intentions. They know when somebody comes into this house that's just a thrill seeker. Yeah. And they will respond, but it's, it won't be a positive way. No, they'll be mad. Yeah. And I warn people, do not come into this house to provoke them. I said, because the outcome won't be good. 
Yeah, we don't like the provoke. We never mm -hmm. provoke in our investigations. It's not something that we like to do at all. No. Right. Yeah. Even when we go into the Mona case, it was special. Mm -hmm. We just, you know, we clear homes from time to time. And look, most cases I ever, I hate those cases. I absolutely hate those cases. Yeah. Are like doing the theology is crazy. Yeah. And I know you've dealt with it too. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, sucks. Takes forever to recover from those investigations. Yeah. It's like, you know, the rest of the month off the charts, we're not doing anything. And maybe going big for money, but other than that, <laughs> we're not doing any more ghost investigations. I'm too tired. <clears throat> you know what? One of the things that really blew me away here is, is this old PX box obelisk that somebody sent me. And. When I had that down in the basement, it was intelligently carrying on a conversation with me. A spirit used that box, PX box, to actually carry on a conversation with me. I took it upstairs to test it again, and sure enough, I mean, it worked just like a spirit box, or it worked like somebody was just standing there talking to me. And these spirits were using words that weren't even in the dictionary. Oh, you know, that's that's when you know just, you know, it, it doesn't matter. If it's an electronic device, they can manipulate it, even the TV set. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can use that TV set like a spirit box. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's my theory. I mean, when you lose your physical body, what do you have left? There's yeah. Energy. I mean, I always say we consume food to create energy, and our brains are like a computer. And, you know, they can manipulate us, too. I mean, it's when somebody hears something in their voice, in their ear. You know, I think, I believe that that's something manipulating them. Maybe manipulating the brain a little bit. Right. So, you know, we're all just energy anyways. Well, there was this one incident. I, I swear my cat, one of those spirits spoke through my cat. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I captured that on video. It's on one of the videos. I don't remember which one it is, but. I swear that, you know, a spirit spoke through my cat because I was out on the porch and I was asking something and it sounded like my cat intelligently responded to my question. I'd have to find out which video that's in. That, that was quite a few years ago, but that was pretty strange. I'll have to look for that one because I like yeah. it because... I think that our dog is talking all the time. Yeah. <laughs> we hear his voices that sound like he's saying words. That's a little one. Oh, let's see the cat video. Yeah. <laughs> so, what was, and maybe you don't want to reveal this, but what, what were some of your scarier moments in the house? I would say in the last few months, the really dark encounters that happened mm -hmm. i went i did an investigation at the southwest harbor house in southwest harbor maine and it was almost like the houses became connected oh. you know with the same activity going on at both places it was almost like you know to a spirit their distance doesn't mean anything to them i mean it's not relevant to them you know, like it is to us, but but something something happened where it was like these houses became connected with the activity, and I'm talking about the dark activity. Is and that what's that? Will that video come out with the Chronicle video? No, no, I will never focus on that video ever again. I mean, that's that's called uh, the Hauntings of Southwest Harbor. Okay. That's on the YouTube channel. That's okay. I posted that some time ago, but yeah, that's something I won't focus on again. I will talk about um, basically what I learned from that eventually, but I don't ever want to go back and listen to those captures ever again. Yeah. It was it yeah. Cool. It was pretty we, dark. We did this case in Wisconsin. The first seven audio audio responses were, F you, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill them, um, I'm going to F and kill you, um, 
I don't remember what the rest was. I was like, okay, I'm done. I just put it down. I left my phone. I'm like, I know what I'm dealing with now. Screw you. <laughs> I'm not going to listen to any more audio from you. And the yep. thing just, oh my God, that thing just kept lighting up like crazy. I think most people would consider running into an apparition has got to be the most scariest thing, but in, it's not. You know, there's worse things than just running a, across an apparition. When I first started this, yeah, it scared the living crap out of me when I encountered them because it's not something that I was used to. I mean, this was something all new to me, but that was kind of my fault too because I kind of agged it on. You know, I mean, I put them in a position that, they had they revealed themselves to me in a form of an apparition because I demanded it. I remember yeah. That. yeah, you didn't believe it. No, I didn't. I didn't believe they could do it. I mean, plus I was starting to have a lot of doubt about a lot of things about this activity. I, I mean, I knew it was real. I knew that you know it was very powerful, but there was just some doubts that I had. I'm like, okay, I hear your voices all the time. You move things around the house constantly doors opening and closing you're walking through here i hear your disembodied voices but what do you look like right you know i mean i it was my understanding that in hauntings you definitely i mean I, don't get me wrong because i saw stuff but it wasn't very clear but i pretty much opened up the door to that and it's just something that that's happened ever since because once you it's almost like once you give them that invitation, it's it's there. Yeah. So, have you had any funny things happen? You know, something like plays a prank on you, or you go look back and you go, ha 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 ha. <laughs> if there's one thing I'm glad about is that my wife doesn't do these investigations with me, and she doesn't look at the videos. You know, she doesn't watch the Ghost of Karma main videos. And the reason why I say that is because these spirits do tell on you. Mm. You know, I mean, I haven't done nothing bad where I wouldn't want my wife to find out about it. I'm not talking something horrible I did, but, yeah. you know, there's a couple of things I did do in this house that if she found out that I did that, she'd been pissed. Yeah. You know, and I know these spirits would have told on me. Good example we were doing an investigation, some paranormal investigators is here. You know, I accidentally passed gas. I mean, we all do it. It's just a part of life. You know, I mean, but they started telling on me, and they even said Kent farted. You know, I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me. I mean, seriously, you know, I was trying to act like it was the lady's sons that did it, you know, and <laughs> kind of play it off, but, you know, these spirits are telling on me. I'm like, are you kidding me? Uh, One of the things that I did is I, the when we had a heavy rain, there was water pouring in the basement, and I took, there was this old blanket that was next to the washer. I mean, it had been there for months. It was just folded up, and I'm like, oh, nobody's going to use this for anything. So I took it downstairs, and I sat it in the basement up against the wall where the water is coming out because I was trying to do an investigation. And all you could hear is this loud splashing sound where the water is coming through. Well, a couple months later, she was looking for that blanket. Well, that blanket that blanket was destroyed. Yeah. That's going to be mentioned in the upcoming video. You'll have to see what happened with that. But but it's like, okay, I know that if she did investigations with me, they would have been telling her that uh, your husband's the one that's guilty why you can't find the blanket. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, boy. Stuff yeah. like that. I haven't had a ghost tell on me yet. That's what I know of. But, uh, yeah, I'm a good type of giving a listen for that from there on out. Cause, yeah. Because we do, you know, every once in a while we go to places or, or somewhere else. You know, it's another thing I can tell with the way they react. I mean, I know there's, yeah. when I go to bed at night, I leave the TV on all night, you know, because they drown out the noise. Yeah, yeah and I also. Me, not just me. I don't let him do that, but he did that for years. I can't see yeah. No, the talking. Oh, that's yeah, you got the fan going to, to help drown out the noise, but you kind of learn what these spirits like watching. You know, you can tell based on the sounds in the room. 
you know, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch music, and all of a sudden you hear this loud popping sounds, and like, okay, so I'll put some music on, but, you know, it's just, you know, personal stuff like that that happens. I don't, there's a lot of stuff that happens I don't talk about in the videos. Yeah. Right, because you're living it. You're living yeah. it. It's just videos on YouTube. Yeah. This is your life, and, you know, they're almost like since they're there all the time, they're almost like friends. Yeah. You're part of their family now. You guys are, yeah. That's cool though when you get to the point where you can I am home and blah 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 and you know. Yeah. I used to do that. I used to do that and I never got a response, but Well my aunt did that in her house where she was having a like a really bad experience of, with the old lady that died in her house and she would like mess up the kitchen every time she left she would open all the cabinets in the kitchen she would pull plates down and the, when she'd come home all the plates and stuff and everything it was a mess the and pulled, yeah and then she started making friends with the ghost it was the, the old lady that died in the house and she said hey martha i don't know if that was her name but i live here now i know this used to be your house i know that you're there we need to coexist. Can you please stop messing up the kitchen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she would talk to him every time she came home. And um, I would say, like, within a month, she no longer had messes in her kitchen. She would talk to her every time she got home or whatever the ghost name was. She knew the name. She knew who she was. She got all the information from um, the person's sister uh, from the house that she, you know, and she made a friend. And no, no longer had paranormal activity. Like if she would see things out of the corner of her eye, but none of the major stuff started happening anymore. Yeah. yeah. You, I don't care where you're going, even if it's demonic, you have to be respectful. You yeah. Have to hurt it because what goes around comes around. And right. You need an experience there, but something else will come around and hit you later on. Which, yeah, I've seen people come in here and all they want to do is get get a good capture and they start saying stuff that really pisses these spirits off. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, I tell people, you don't have to tell them to knock or do things. If they do it, they do it. I mean, they will respond when they want to respond and how they want to respond, you know, and, but there are people that want to stir that hornet's nest and it just pisses them off. Right. I, I think, you know, they're not like dogs where they're going to do anything on command. It's, yeah. You know, yeah. They used to be people. Yeah. So treat them as such. Right. Yeah. And knowing your location, I always say, know your location, know, you know the history and all that sort of stuff. I know you, you, you don't want to do that when you go to certain places. But... That, I like not to know the yeah. person I go to. I'm similar, but he likes to know everything, so well, that's how we work well together. Right, yeah. so <laughs> if I know a name, and I know when you died, and I know all this other information, I can use that. Hey, John, you know, this is Matt, I know you died in 1952 with a heart attack. You know, let's be friends, or whatever you want to say, and, and that's where you kind of start. I Please. like to know, like, uh, that I'm going to go in there and I'm going to ask all these questions and I get to learn about them and then I can go back and mm -hmm. look and see if that information matches what I was told about the spirit. Yeah, I, I like to uh, yeah, do the investigation first, see what I capture, and then to see if the history or names that actually existed at that location can verify the activity. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, plus I don't like, I don't like just calling somebody's name out. Like, okay, there's been people that have contacted me and asked me to contact their, their loved one that passed away. And I said, I, I don't do that. That's not something that I do. I mean, I don't practice spiritualism. I investigate activity just to verify there's activity there. And they're just trying to figure out what the activity is. But I don't go out of my way just to conjure somebody up out of a realm of peace just to talk with them. Right. You know, so that's why, let's just say if um, somebody said that they're having activity at their house and their father passed away and there, his name was John Doe. Well, if I walk into the house and say, okay, John Doe, are you here? Well, I'm calling his name out. 
you know, if there's something there, I would rather they tell me their name first before I actually knew who they were. Right. To me, that that's validation. It verifies that the activity is real and it, the activity is, you, you kind of get a lead on what's going on. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. You know, my vacuum is still going. <laughs> it hasn't stopped. And it's still in like the same circle. It's just circling. Yeah, I think for the longest time I had, we got this new washer and dryer and I, this spirit loved playing with the washer. We had to end up unplugging it. Oh my gosh. Because it just kept going on going and going. Well, it was making, it was playing with the buttons. It'd make this music sounds with it. Beep, 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 beep. You know, it even went. Yeah. Joshua and I, my son Joshua and I were sitting there. I said, Joshua, let's test this. I go, beep, 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 beep. And then the washer goes, beep, beep. And I'm like, okay, that's definitely a spirit playing with that. Yeah, unplug it, unplug it. <laughs> and then it turned around and did the exact same thing I said. Then it goes, then it was, the washer made the beeping sounds. Beep, 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 beep. And I looked at Joshua, my son, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't capture that on camera, but I did capture it on camera where they were playing with it. But I kind of figured it was Hattie Lamb looking at a new washer, the technology of it, playing with the buttons. I don't know. I mean, you just don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. What does this thing do? Well, I mean, if you died in, let's say, the 1920s, and it's, 19, it's 2020 now, or 22, actually, I mean, the technology, I mean, they must be look like, must be like they're living in a in the future. You know? I mean, you look around in like the world. Yeah. All this stuff. I mean, we have phones that can do all kinds of cool stuff. I mean. Insane. You can get on the internet. You can make a phone call. You can text somebody. You can email with somebody. I mean, 15 years ago, you couldn't do that. 20 years ago, you couldn't do that. Yeah. You know what? I've heard people say, well, I haven't heard it, but I've been told about it by others that there's people that go on social media saying, well, Kent's a tech pro. You know, um, you know, all this stuff is fake, and he, he uses software and all this other stuff to manipulate the videos and stuff. You know, I'm like, yeah, whatever. I mean, I, this is a Windows 7 laptop. I don't even really know how to use a Windows 10. But to, to tell you how much tech smart I am, when I first started doing the investigations, I held my cell phone up like this. You know, and that's where you just got that straight line on the screen, and I hate that. You know, I can't, I can't watch something that does that. But I'm like, oh well. I mean, you know, I got this or the other camera, and I'm like, right now I can only use this. Well, then somebody told me they go, well, why do you hold your cell phone like that? We'd like to have a full screen, turn it sideways. I'm like, what? I mean, like that? They go, yeah. And I go, what, you can do video like that? They go, yeah, you get the full screen. I'm like, I didn't know that. <laughs> you know? I mean, I, I'm not a tech person, you know. I'm, I'm pretty stupid when it comes down to this high-tech electronic stuff nowadays. Right. You know, I, I think a lot of people, they don't believe so much that they just explain away every instance of real evidence. Oh, yeah. well, they probably, you know, Photoshop that, and they probably... The one thing that, you know, I want to do is have integrity and right. not do any of that stuff. Yeah. And if we don't find any evidence, if the ghosts don't come and talk to us, we say that. Like, we're not faking anything. Right. But I think there's always going to be someone who says, mm, they're faking it. Oh, yeah. They're doing it. They're, you know, they're always going to be an naysayer. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. I mean, I even heard one say, oh, that's his finger going across the camera. And I'm like, you know how big my finger is? I mean, if I took my finger across the camera, I mean, there's there's no way I could get away with something like that. That's ridiculous. Yeah. But, but you know what? I, the, I don't do these, I don't put these videos out, you know, to debate people about this. I mean... It, it is what it is. I mean, this is paranormal activity. If you believe in it, learn from it. If you don't believe in it, well, fine, move on. You know, I, I don't get why these people that don't believe in the paranormal love to go on different YouTube channels. I'm not just saying mine. I take the comments off mine. But, you know, and they sit there and bash them and call them names and, 
you know, it's like, my God, if you don't believe in it, don't watch it. And don't comment. Why? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, jeez. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he, our comments, I review it before I let them go out. Yeah. You know, yeah. 99% of them are, are very pleasant and very positive. Really yeah. Like you guys investigating, keep it up, blah, blah, blah. If you're thankful for everybody that does that. Oh, I got to the point I was being doxxed. People are going on the YouTube channel, you know, releasing information where my son lives and what my address is and, you know, all this other crap. I'm like, all right, you know what? They crossed the line. I'm not in this to be mingling on social media. You know, I'm not a big social media mingler, you know. So, and plus the vicious comments from trolls attacking other people that were leaving nice comments saying, oh, you know, this guy is a cult member and all you people that believe in this year are a cult. You know, I'm like, you know what, I had enough of this crap. I'm not in this for the drama, all right? You know, so I just cut the comments off. We developed a, a Facebook group page where people can go on there and comment and mingle with each other about these videos. And I've got admins and moderators that can moderate what's going on there. You know, but when you're getting thousands and thousands of comments on the YouTube channel, I mean, as a whole, right now, the YouTube channel's had almost 7 million views right. as a whole. You know, that's with all the videos combined. Yeah. You know, it gets, there's, and if you look at reports, yeah, if you look at reports in real time, there's probably, you know, they, they get thousands of views every day the YouTube channel as a whole, where you get thousands of comments. Well, I don't have time to monitor that. I mean, I'm not. And and the, the down thing is you're responsible for your YouTube channel. If there's somebody on there that crosses a line with YouTube and violates community standard, you could end up losing your YouTube channel. You know, no. Because if you don't put a stop to it, YouTube will. So, I'm like, you know what? Best thing to do is just disable the comments. Yeah, smart. Oh, I don't know how we got off on that subject, but it's, it's, it's just a part of dealing with the paranormal. You know, I mean, it's just a part of dealing with the paranormal. <laughs> You're just going to run into people that just flat out don't believe. Well, I opened up the Lamb House so people can see it for themselves. I'm like, well, you know, anybody can come in here and check it out for themselves. Right. You, you know, I had an open door policy. I don't right now, obviously. You know, the house is closed down, and I'm not even doing investigations in here at the moment. So I'm just working on investigating the investigations for, for over the past four years. Right. Well, sometimes in a review, you find really cool stuff that you just didn't see the first time. Right, yeah. yeah. I've been there, you know, to Mary. We were walking around the engine room doing an investigation at whatever time it was, 2 o'clock in the morning, and they had just had all our Halloween props out. And then I started, you know, going back through this, like three months later, I was just bored. And I'm flipping through the photos, I'm like, wait, what was that person standing there? Wait a minute, they're not standing there. Have you heard the story of John on the Queen Mary? No. Had, okay, so they used to have emergency drills, and the guys would pretend, you know, like it was. I don't know, a race or something, and they would try and jump through these metal doors before they slammed shut. And you couldn't stop them. They would just cut you in half or whatever. That's what happened to him. He slipped, fell, got cut about mid-shoulder to about mid-torso. And so he has one arm, most of his upper torso, with his head and half his arm. And uh, so I'm looking at this photo, and I'm realizing it's transparent. And the more I zoom in, I, I thought it was a hell of, you know, Halloween decoration. I'm like, that's just hanging from the ceiling. It's just, you know, and then I realized, no, I can see, like, all the buttons and everything behind him. And it looked just like a, you know, an old primary worker. So. Yeah. Wow. It's just cool when you go back, you know, and think about research, too, and stuff like that, and you know, research. But, uh, yeah, it's always fun. Anyways, uh, Kit. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Because we're getting into about we're just over an hour now. Oh wow, we we talked for an hour. <laughs> no, but I mean that's 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 
Yeah, I'm going to have my bowl of homemade chicken noodle soup <laughs> when we get off here. Yeah. So what would you say to anybody who wants to get into investigating the paranormal, like they're brand new, maybe they're like in their 20s or something like that, and they're like, this is what I want to do. What would you tell them? Would you tell them, no, don't do it, or would you tell them, go for it? Uh, if I had to do it all over again, I would have never investigated this stuff. Let's just put it that way. Don't you know, do yeah, don't. There's, and I'll be talking about this in the Ghost Chronicle series, but at least in my case, in this house, what I've encountered, I'll never be the same again that person I was once was is gone you know it's there's things that can permanently change you and per permanently change your way of thinking when you encounter this type of activity I would say if they go and investigate a location to see if there is really a haunting there just out of curiosity to see if they capture anything but I wouldn't advise anybody mingling with the spirits, if, if that makes any sense. Yeah. You know, do an investigation, see if a place is haunted, get your captures, you know, study your captures, but don't. If, if you run into a true haunting or, or there is something seriously going on even that is evil, don't mingle with it. Right. Don't mingle with it. I mean... You open that door, I mean, God only knows what will happen. Right. But, and if you're going to get involved with doing paranormal investigations, you better have a set of rules that you set for yourself and don't cross the line. You know, right. just don't walk into a place without a plans, without, you know, having rules, what lines you don't cross. You know, because there are lines I will not cross. Yeah, yeah that's really good advice. Yeah, that's definitely. We, we definitely have rules for sure uh, to make sure that we don't do anything that we shouldn't do. Yeah. Anybody else with us doesn't do that as well. Like, we do not Yeah, you know, the, this, this type of activity I'm dealing with can be extremely dangerous to somebody's state of mind. You know, and it's not necessarily physical attacks that can be damaging, but the mental attacks. Right. Yeah. You know. Um, a real mental breakdown. Yeah. With, with you know, certain forces. Right. Well, I, yeah, we've, we've dealt with that yeah. over the years. We've had people just disappear after an investigation. What happened to you? They won't pick up the phone. They won't text you back. Finally, you go over there and they're like just in bed, you know, not wanting to move. And they're in severe depression. And, you know, this is like the happiest, go luckiest person you want to meet. And they're, they're just, you know, yeah. they've had some type of attachment come on to them or they, they just, you know, they said something stupid and they triggered a demonic attack or whatever. And so I would say, you don't know what you're talking to when you go into a location. You have to be so careful because you piss something off and you know, take it from somebody's diet. Um, you know, you'll pay for it later. Yeah, well, on that happy note, <laughs> it got dark there for a minute, it's a little <laughs> dark. Um, so tell us again one more time the, the about with the chronicles that's going to come out like in a week and a half or two weeks. Yeah, I'm working on it now. Uh, Ghost Chronicles Chapter 2 will be out in about a week to two weeks. And then I'll yeah, move on to Chapter 3, move on to Chapter 4. And then, then somebody else is going to take it over. I, I can't say any more than that. You know, it's um, 
somebody else is going to do a documentary on the final part of Ghost Chronicles. So. Well, that'll be something to look forward yeah, to. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we thank you so much for taking the time yeah. to come on our podcast. We really, truly appreciate it. Oh, no problem. And, uh, you're definitely, I think, one of the most fascinating people that I've spoken to in a long time. So, Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> you know, it's these spirits. I mean, they're fascinating. 